We are gathered here to fill you with fear and give you a treat for your ears as we invade your mind with our scary rhymes and some tales that can be gory. As you bear witness and sit here and listen to our poetic horror stories. I'm an archaeologist, and I made a discovery that is incredible. This discovery will change the direction of the world, because I found God's voice. This is something like we have never seen before. It's completely unheard of. When I made this discovery, I was excavating in the mountains of Peru. It was just me and my assistant, Lisa. That was a part of my two-person crew. We were in search of ancient Mayan relics. When I heard a voice in a cave told me to come this way. Deep in the cave was a beautiful warming white glow. Next thing I know, I was hit with a beam. It hit me with a great force. I was found by Lisa passed out on the floor. She asked me what happened, but I didn't have a memory. I didn't recall. I was taken to a little local clinic to have a checkup to check my vitals, to make sure I was okay. I was fine, but in the middle of my neck was a bruise. It was in the shape of a circle. It was red and purple. But the doctor on call told me, it's fine. I don't need to be concerned. But that wasn't true. Because the next day when I woke up, I noticed overnight while I was asleep, the bruises grew huge. This is just a friendly reminder to please like and comment to let us know how we are doing so far. We would love to hear from you all. And if you're new, please subscribe and become a part of the PHS crew and we thank you. The bruise started to surround the whole of my neck and new symptoms started. I could feel a burning sensation in my chest. The burning was coming from deep inside of me and I could feel a vibration moving through my body. Suddenly, Surrounding me, I could see a light. It was brilliant, radiating and bright. It was coming from my soul. It was completely beautiful. Something about it started to make me feel at ease. It was peaceful. That's when I noticed. When I looked in the mirror at my neck, the bruises had healed. I couldn't believe that this was real. I called Lisa. She was on the other half of my crew. I wanted to let her know that somehow I no longer had a bruise. It was a miracle. But when I went to speak, a strange feeling came over me. Lisa said hello, but the sound that came out of my throat wasn't my own. It was commanding, bold, strong, and very forceful. Lisa sounded stunned. She stuttered. Frank, is that you? I said yes but it was with great power and authority. And if you knew, this wasn't me. I was a really smart guy, but I was a bit timid, meek, and quite shy. But my voice and my words came out of me really powerful and strong. Frank, you sound so different. You don't sound like your normal, timid, meek, and unconfident self. There is something about your voice that is charismatic, soothing, inviting, and charming. I can feel your presence through the phone. It's somehow warming and comforting. Right now, if you told me to jump off a cliff, I would. Tell me, what can I do to please you? I was alarmed by the way Lisa was speaking to me. She isn't the type of person to say these types of things. I told her I will call her back. Then I need to go. But she started to cry when I said that I was going to hang up the phone. She said, Don't leave me, please. I need you to keep speaking. 
speaking to me. I want to praise you. I need your guidance. I need you to lead me. I feel like you are the only one who can save me. Without your words, I think I would feel totally empty. I don't know what came over me, but I told her, Lisa, Lisa enough. enough, in a commanding, boisterous tone. I will call you back, but right now, I need to get off the phone. And in a very calming voice, she said, Okay, my lord. And just like that, she hung up the phone. I thought to myself, Lisa never acted that way before. It's like she was being controlled. Like she was a sheep in a cult. Just by her listening to my voice, she started to act crazy. This could be dangerous. I believe I need to watch what I say. My voice now seems to be able to influence the way people think. I could tell Lisa wanted to worship me. And just the thought of that scares me. I need to get rid of this voice. I need it to leave. I know. I'll go back to the cave. Where this voice came from. It's the source. So, I left to head back to the cave. But of course, there were hiccups along the way. I needed supplies before I could go. So I went to a local shop. When I was almost done with my shopping, suddenly I heard a big commotion coming from the front of the store. There were three masked men with guns, yelling out, everyone get down on the floor. One of the masked men turned to the cashier, pointed the gun at her face and told her, give me all of the money. Do this quickly and we will leave. That's when one of the robbers noticed me. He was standing in front of the door. He said, we told you to get down on the floor. Then he cocked the gun and aimed towards me. But without any hesitation, I told him, No. no, 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 no. Suddenly, the floor started to quake, shake, and vibrate, just by the tone of my voice. The guys dropped their guns immediately and tried to run, but they didn't make it far. I said in my god voice, Stop. Stop. Don't, Don't move an, move an inch, inch more. more. Now, now you three, three get, get down, down, down on your knees, knees on, on the floor. floor. And they swiftly did what I command because they believed my word was law. I asked, why did you come here to steal and rob from these good people? You know in the Ten Commandments it states that stealing is wrong. Yes, we know. We're sorry. We won't do it anymore. Please forgive us. Give us another chance. We will change our sinful ways. It was crazy. They were groveling at my feet. They begged me for forgiveness and mercy. They were in tears, but I could tell they were remorseful. I felt kind of awful. I said, it's not up to me to forgive you. You need to ask these good folk to forgive your sinful, wicked ways. And if they do, then you need to volunteer to work here to help build your community. This will be fair. Everyone in the shop started to cheer. They all came together. It was surreal. I couldn't believe it. I changed the situation just by my words and voice. This made me feel good. I had to quickly slip off, or they would never let me go. Before I went into the cave, I thought to myself, I have a choice. I could do some good with this voice. I could change the world. Do I give it up? That is, if it is possible. I don't know. I walked into the entrance of the cave where the voice found me. Suddenly, I saw a movement coming towards me. It was in the shadows. Then it moved into the light. What stood in front of me wasn't what I expected. It was a slimy and wet-looking humanoid insect. It was shocked and taken aback. It spoke to me with the same authoritative voice as me. It said, My name is Inti. And I am a god that dwells here in this cave. I have dwelled here for millions of decades. The voice you host wasn't meant for mankind. It should be only used by a god. This is the way it's been since the beginning of time. I understand. That is why I'm here to give it back. I see the power it wills. I don't want this voice to fall into the wrong hands. I believe it will be the destruction of man. Yes, it is a very powerful tool. I didn't mean for it to escape the cave. It belongs to a god that just recently passed away. 
The gods have been preparing for him to reincarnate and to give him back his voice in a few days. I'm glad you have come back. This will make everything easier, so we can continue the ritual. And we need someone like you anyway. Will you stay? I started to feel coming here was a big mistake. I know if I stay, I won't be okay. I looked at the deity as it moved closer to me. Then it said, I was the one who was supposed to protect God's voice for the ritual when you found it. The other gods doesn't know what's going on. They wouldn't have ever forgiven me, and I would have been banished, exiled, and ridden off for dead. But you're here now, and all I have to do is cut off your head, and we can use your blood to complete the ritual. You will be our sacrifice. I thought to myself, no way. I need to find a way to escape. I thought, if it gets a hold of me, I would never leave. So I started to yell loudly, and the cave started to shake. I caused an earthquake. This took the deity off guard. As I started to charge, I ran straight towards it. I rammed it with all my might, which knocked it backwards into a deep, dark hole that opens up on the cave floor. I made it out in the nick of time, just as the cave started to cave in. I made it out safely, but barely. The timing was razor thin. This happened over 50 years ago. I'm no spring chicken, that's for sure. And I'm lying here on my deathbed. There's nowhere for me to run. And yes, Indy is still after me. The other guys found out the voice was gone. And he was banished, exiled from his home. He vowed he would get God's voice back no matter what it would take. He was going to rip off my head and take it to the gods. So it can take back its rightful place. But it's never going to happen. Because God's voice left me about ten years ago. When I had a really bad car accident. A beam from a truck went right through my windshield and through my neck and destroyed my vocal cords. For the last ten years I haven't been able to talk. They had to remove my voice.